Hello everyone, welcome to the third and last part of a series of videos on the Gleason's AE map. In this episode, we will be looking at two other so-called maps and compare them with the Gleason's AE map and see which one can take the heat. I have pointed out in the last video that the main mistake people did in the past was when they were trying to figure out the shape of the Earth. They placed the Sun at the center of creation. They built an Earth model around the Sun. Therefore, they had to come up with several theories to keep the Sun at the center of creation and not Earth itself. It seems like this mistake is still being made today. The first map we will be looking at is this one that has been widely promoted lately, the moon map. I found it weird to find this moon map being promoted here in Japan, where I live. I have been with other flat earthers here in Japan from the very beginning, and I have met with many of these people in person. But then just out of nowhere, a pretty lady with well-produced videos appeared on YouTube promoting this moon map. Why is it being pushed into mainstream? The moon map is being promoted with no real science behind it. Just the fictional concept as we find in science fiction stories of the old, when they wondered what the moon was and how to get there. This theory, if not centered on the sun, as most of the other theories have come up, it is centered on the moon. Again, a theory centered on the luminaries created in the fourth day rather than centering the attention on Earth, which was created on the first day. Nobody could put it better than one of my subscribers, who left the following comment. The idea of a moon map where the sun thaws out new areas over time, having our solar circle moving around a bigger circle, is a hard one to swallow. To think in time all the land we know today will be under miles of ice and on the other side of the, of the plane it will be turned out is slim to no chance of reality. It would have been noticed by now as the ice wall would be closer to us on one side and further on the other by now. The town area we live in never moves as the one theory made thinks it does. So let's look closely at this moon map. They have been putting out this image, but have not explained how things working on it. How about time zones? Not even mention the fact that this model has no political division of the countries to check if it matches reality. No latitude, longitude coordinate system to check if the continents match reality. You cannot just move continents around and say, that's how it is. We need to check the location of the countries and see if it matches with the position of the sun when it rises and when it goes away. And no flight routes have been drawn on this map either. The Gleason's A map has all the flight routes mapped out. Aaron Dover, when he was alive, designed a software to track flight routes on the Gleason's flat earth map. The result was a heat map showing the speed of aircraft. The heat map matches perfectly with what we have today displayed on the Gleason's AE map, not with what this moon map shows. Now let's listen to a short explanation on the moon map from one of those promoting it. Now the stars above us are revolving anti-clockwise from their usual fixed positions at one degree every 72 years, and a whole zodiac arc every 2160 years. This rotation keeps shifting one arc every 2160 years until the wheel makes a full circle of what is known as a great year. A great year occurs when the zodiac wheel has made a complete turn 360 degrees in 25 920 years. It means that the location we are today was already inhabited some 25, 920 years ago. That much of what we are digging out today are the ruins of what were here 
some 25,920 years ago. Sure, some channels defend that much of these areas that are being unearthed today have been so for 200 and 300 years, but there are others who say these have been here since the last ice age some 25,920 years ago. Now let's look at closely to see if there is any credibility to this theory. Here is a 1514 Portuguese flat earth map of our existing realm. When sailing around the plain, the Portuguese seafarers made records of the luminaries in the sky. They recorded the position of Polaris, the Sun, the Moon, as well as some of other stars. They recorded Polaris as being the center of our Earth plane and not being in the center of a greater plane four times bigger than our observations have pointed out over the years. Another important observation made by the Portuguese explorers was of the position of the Southern Cross, or the Crux constellation. As they sailed over the Atlantic, Indian and Pacific Oceans, they were able to observe and record the position of the Southern Cross. If you consider there is a greater realm, having a much bigger sky view, this observation would only have been possible when traveling through the Atlantic and the East Indian Oceans, but never when sailing over the Pacific Ocean. By the simple fact that the Southern Cross would not be visible at such great distance, being on the other side of this greater realm, Polaris would not be visible at all unless someone was sailing deep out in the Pacific Ocean. The Southern Cross would only be possible to be seen at one side of the thawed out regions, and the zodiac wheel would have to spin much faster to make up for the size of the greater realm. In our reality, Polaris disappears into the horizon at a distance of 6,000 miles. If you were directly below Polaris and walked away for 6,000 miles, Polaris would disappear into the horizon as you reach a distance of 6,000 miles. From one side of the equator to the other, the distance equals to 12,000 miles. In our present reality, having the Eglison's AE map as a true map of our realm, these facts are backed up by our observation. Anyone standing on the northern regions above the equator can observe Polaris from the northern tip of South America to North Africa to China and from Hawaii. The rotation of the zodiac wheel, changing its position one degree every 72 years, is real, but not over a greater realm, but in fact over our realm, over the Gleason's AE map. The moon map creators place Polaris in the center of this greater realm, making it impossible to be seen from the place in which Polaris is seen today, unless they place Polaris at a much higher position, but for this to happen, they would have to claim the Polaris much bigger, a giant star. Did I just stumble with heliocentric theory here? If Polaris disappears at the horizon, at a distance of 6,000 miles, how can this model claim to be the true map of the flat Earth? Each and every night, this moon map gets debunked on and by itself. When comparing the moon map to the Gleason's AE map, the moon map does not stand a chance. The moon map is another distraction which was sent by the controllers to get our attention away from the model we already have today. We already have a solid ground base. We just need to figure out how the luminaries work. We don't need to start from scratch again and move to models that has no observational evidence at all. If the creators of the moon map want us to believe their map is legit, they should start showing evidences and backing it up with facts. How about to start with diamond zones? The Gleason's AE map provides an accurate description of the time zones that matches reality. In episode 2 of our series, we cover time zones in detail. Please watch episode 2. 
Emergency landings should also be explained on the moon map. Not one or two, but dozens and dozens, as it has been clearly demonstrated on the Gleason's AE map. Flight routes should also be fully explained on such model, rather than just offer some philosophical approaches not backed with facts. The moon map cannot be used as a nav navigational tool. On the other hand, the Gleason's AE map is a precise tool for navigation once it has its coordinate points at the right locations. Let's now look at the next map which claims to represent our reality, the so-called Pac-Man map. When I first came across this map, I knew it looked familiar. I had seen it before. In fact, the so-called Flat Earth map is not a Flat Earth map at all. It's an old existing map called the Oblique Mercator Projection of the Globe. This so-called map of the elect is a fraud. This map was not created by Flat Earthers. It can't be, because it's a projection of the globe. When I compared it in Photoshop, both maps are one and the same. Even in lines and small details, are the same. There is a reason this map is called the Pac-Man map. Their creators claim that when a boat or an airplane flies in one direction, it magically reappears on the other side. This map does not represent any reality in any shape or form. Since this so-called map of the elect is nothing more than nothing less than a knockoff version of an existing Mercator's projection, which represents the globe, I will not even waste time comparing it with the Gleason's AE map. There would be no point in asking for veracity of this map using flight routes or asking for an explanation on how Amelia Earhart flew around the equator, which is perfectly demonstrated on the Gleason's A map. Neither how emergency landings are explained or time zones. This map, along with its creators, should not be taken seriously. I have found evidence that the reason the AE map is attacked so much it's because it is the map that destroys the spinning ball earth narrative. Many infiltrators have been sent to try to discredit this map. Jesuits and Freemasons have always been known as infiltrators, and once they infiltrated a group, they try to change it from within. I used to get many comments from non-content channels, attacking Flat Earth and defending the globe. Now their tactic has changed. They come saying they are Flat Earthers, but that the Gleason's map is not the real map of our realm. A very typical tactic from the enemy. But the fact of the matter is that the Gleason's A map is the only one which has been beating the globe hard, mercilessly. Every flight route or emergency landing is always better explained when looked at on the Gleason's Flat Earth map. Latitude and longitude coordinates are also 100% accurate on the Gleason's Flat Earth map, and so are time zones. The luminaries have no bearings on the shape of the Earth. Triangulation of the Sun and Moon is impossible on both models, flat or bow Earth. We do have a good foundation by which we should be building up. Be careful with this Moon map. The word Moon comes from the Latin word Luna, and the word lunacy comes from luna, which means the state of being a lunatic, insanity. Remember, words have meanings. I hope this series of videos on the Gleason's A map helps you to understand that the only map that has put a good fight and won several battles over the spinning ball earth is the Gleason's A map. That should say a lot on why they attack this map so hard. Take care and I hope to be back soon for more videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.